Hi, I'm Mary Wing Soares, and we are here today with um, Scott LaLiberty to um, have another episode of Transparency in Government. Thank you so much for coming, Scott. My pleasure. Summer is over. It school is. is right around the corner. It is. We, a, a sign of the arrival of the school year. I uh, just had a chance to watch the marching band in their uh, end of uh, band camp rehearsal. It's, it's kind of, you know that the curtain's coming down on summer uh, when that happens. Right, so, and, I, and yeah. I heard it was fabulous. Yeah, fantastic. I wish yeah. I had gotten over. Good, good, good group. I, I think we'll all get multiple chances That's right. uh, to, to see and hear them this year. So we look forward to it. And we'll be comfortable and safe as well, won't we? Yes, we as will. As we're watching. Yes. <laughs> yes, we will. Our new bleachers are in. Uh, they are in. Uh, certainly uh, look a little more sturdy, and I will say as a larger person, uh, <laughs> I'll feel a little more secure uh, watching games. So, Good. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of things have happened over the summer. Yes. You have moved into the new summer. offices. Yes. Yep. We did move in uh, the weekend after 4th of July, uh, or the, the, you know, for, I think it took a three or four day process. Mm -hmm. Um, got, got settled in up there. We haven't completely settled in yet. Uh, obviously, our maintenance crew is focused on the schools. Uh, we have, you know, we, we've kind of said to them, get, get to us when you're, when you're done with the, with the schools. So right. uh, they're wrapping up now in the buildings, and, uh, and they'll be up to finish up a little bit up there. Uh, but certainly a uh, much healthier environment. Uh, I really, I think, I very comfortably speak for the entire staff up there when I express our gratitude. Uh, to the town and to the board for supporting uh, the, the move up there. Uh, it, it, there's a noticeable difference in, in the people's, people's health and in their outlook. And uh, I know I feel much more clear-headed at the end of the day than I did. So well, that's I, I, good. We're, we're grateful uh, for, for, the, for that opportunity. I'm a little frightened about what that meant for the decisions that were made when we weren't clear-headed at the other well, building, yeah. but <laughs> the, maybe the, that makes a difference. The, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think any of us are, are focusing too closely on that, but mm. yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, it, it wasn't uncommon at the end of a long day in there to feel a little lightheaded. And yeah. Little, yeah. Well, that's too bad. There's yeah. nothing, there's nobody left at the old there offices. Is not. There is not. We're using it for storage right now. Uh, we use it for record storage and that sort of thing. We've, we've turned back you know, a lot of the, uh, the utilities and stuff there. Uh, now, so. I know um, you have the beach underneath the high school. Did you move yep. any of those files up, or are you waiting until have, after? Have not yet, but that's the plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to get everything out of there. As, as you know, uh, an, an earth floor down there, right. and uh, we've had some people climbing down in there trying to get records, and they've been some have, you know, been injured and that sort of thing. Sure. So we got to get that out of there and get that, yeah. Good. Get that in a safer place. And we all saw the crane come and take the old high school sign away. They, they did. They did. They took the sign away. Uh, I know I, I haven't got a, an exact timetable, but the new one should be coming uh, in the next couple of weeks. They've got to do some finish work on that. Okay. Uh, but uh, shortly after the opening of school, we expect that to be there. And school opens next week. We're, we are in August. Um, today is August 8th, 17th, 16th. What's the date today? The 16th. <laughs> <laughs> Today is the 16th yes. as we speak. Right. Uh, yeah, we're we're um, we're getting ready. Our new staff come uh, next Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our entire staff returns Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then the students return the following Monday. Right. And uh, we're 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 excited. This is that time of year for us. Uh, for those of us who work year round, um, you know, it's been a lot of preparation. Uh, we've done a lot of work this year in a number of different areas. But we're ready. We're ready. We, we want to get our students back. We want to get our staff back and, 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 and get back to work. But we did have some staff changes over the summer. Um, we lost our mm -hmm. technology integrationist. We, we did. Our technology integration person was, uh, was, had an opportunity to become a director of technology in another district. That was a promotion. So mm -hmm. we, want, we, we want to support that. Um, we actually are still in, in the process of interviewing to replace that because it's not a school year specific. The person doesn't actually teach classes. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to kind of drag that in a little bit and be a little more particular about the hiring that position. Uh, a lot of things that we want to do in the next three years or so uh, are technology rich. So. Right, we want to make sure we have someone good in that position. And we had some really good plans that were started yes. last year under yep. her. 
and those will be carried on. Okay. Yep. Um, I know it took a long time to, to get the team that you had in place. Yes. And then to lose the top dog was kind of... Well, she, yeah, she was the top dog that worked with the teachers. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, we do have some candidates that are, are interesting uh, to us who have similar experience. And certainly, uh, Jen was, was very dynamic and had uh, you know, a Google certified training. I mean, she was a real fine for us. But I think one of the things, and I'm sure this is true in any, in any uh, industry, any line of work, when you bring someone in who you know to be of, of high quality and they're not in the top role, so to speak, you know that you may have to replace them soon because other districts need right. their talents. Right. Uh, so we, we, we hired Jen, we knew she was rock solid, uh, but we also knew we would probably only have her. I was hoping for two years. I was hoping for two years yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But she did some good work and, and I know Gail has, has, has picked up a lot this summer and, mm -hmm. and the, the rest of the staff. Of course, Kendra McCormick, the IT director, has picked up a lot of hers as well. So we have some people multitasking right now, but we expect to have that resolved very okay. soon. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I know for a long time there was not you know, yes. and so now with the vision that we have for this, what you all have for the school, yes. I would hope to see the, all those positions filled in. They will be. Yeah, yeah they will be. I, I think, you know, people have really come to understand as a result of some of the work that we did last year, they understand some of the possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think about something like Google Classroom, which is a free uh, application uh, that was available to us um, that is a very efficient work management tool uh, that, that we really have been able to integrate without a major initiative or a uh, or major impetus. What we did was we rolled it out, showed the staff the benefit of it, and then sort of got out of the way. Right, and, and let people got, explore. We let people explore. Uh, we, we have a lot of confidence in our teachers and in our staff, and we know that when we present something like that, and it's a good idea, you, you don't need to put energy into talking people into it. We, we trust that they're going to look at it and see the same things that we did. But one of the things that has been high on the school board's um, docket mm -hmm. is training for yes. teachers. And it, so my expectation is you have good plans for training this I, year? I think you're going to like uh, what we have planned for this year. Um, um, we have uh, Jay McTie coming to the district. Uh, who only the educators in the audience will recognize, <laughs> but uh, Grant Wiggins and Jay McTie were two pioneers in, uh, in education and in the world of instructional design. And uh, we found out, uh, I, won't, I won't bore everyone with the story, but the short version is we found out that uh, Jay actually lives in Baltimore. And uh, Dan Black entered into some conversations with him, and he found out he could fly back and forth hit to, uh, to, to, Manchester to Manchester in a day. Wow. Uh, so he was willing to do uh, a workshop just for our district. Great. Uh, and, and at a very reasonable <laughs> Is that one of the first three too. days? or That is that he will actually be on uh, Election Day. Oh, yeah, okay, November cool. 6th. Good. We don't want to really, we have a lot of other, we're going to do some school safety training uh, at the beginning of school. We know the teachers need some time to get their classrooms ready. And as you remember, normally we have four days. This year we only have three right. to open up because of the Election Day. Mm -hmm. So we, we are, we're going to use that date in, man, in uh, November to really do some, some, some deep, deep thinking about uh, instructional design. So one of the things that's changing at the middle school, and I'm sure across the district too, is the idea that relationships are very important when, we mm -hmm. come, mm -hmm. when it comes to um, working with our learners. Right. And so we will have storm time built into the schedule every single day, which you know, allows us to have a small number of students that we're going to be interacting with mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. um, Unlike the 20 or 25 you might have in your classroom, you'll only have 12 or 13 of right. these learners. Um, I know part of this is a, a response or maybe a um, proactive uh, measure to help mm -hmm. alleviate some of the bullying or some of the harassment that might have been happening in our schools. I, I think it, it's a part of a larger picture strategy that we're working on uh, to try not only to curb some of the behavioral issues that we have but but also there's a whole uh, you know whole social emotional piece there's a support piece uh, to to uh, the work that we do of course our focus is academic but we know that in order for a student to be able to access 
their academic experiences in a deep way, they have to come to school ready to learn, mm -hmm. and they have to feel like school is a place where they are accepted and where they are challenged and where they fit in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I know I've, I've actually had similar, I, when I was a teacher, I had similar uh, systems in, in place, and it's a very short period of time, uh, but it's a period of time where students can feel like uh, they're going to receive individual attention. They're going to receive. They're going to receive and be recipients of, of a, a, a real meaningful relationship with mm -hmm. an adult, with a staff member whom they trust, and they can go to for uh, for support if they need it. Right. Um, sometimes it's hard, you know, to if you're one of a hundred students on a team, to go up to your math teacher and admit that you don't. Hey, listen, I'm really struggling with this. You have to have a really good relationship with them to trust them like that. Right. But if you have an adult that you feel comfortable with. And you say, you say, hey, I'd, I'd really, I'd really like some help with this concept or that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it makes a difference. Sure. It makes a difference as far as kids feeling comfortable. And it absolutely extends into behavior. Because most of the time, as, as we know, behavior is really a manifestation of their discomfort mm -hmm. in, in some other area of right. life. Very few kids come in and say, I'm going to be... I'm going to be a nudge today. Right. <laughs> they, don't, they don't come in with that plan. There's something right that happens work. as they go along throughout yeah. the day, or or they might have brought it into the school with them. Could very well. You know, but that's you're right. Yep. So I know um, we've had people come before the school board that have talked about situations that they've been uncomfortable with in our yes. in our school. Um, we also had a young lady that came before the school board this summer that had a plan for a positive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kindness. Yeah. I let's see. I G Y B. I, I, I've got your back. I got your I've back. I got your back. I, I yeah. I thought that was a really neat yeah. idea. And how, how great was it that we had a, a student and a mom who put that together? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and a positive thing. That's absolutely something we'll be following through on. Uh, at first with the elementary, uh, the elementary administrators, and hopefully it'll grow up. Mm -hmm. So into the yeah yeah. Um, so another thing that I wanted to talk to you about is I know you have a group of people that are looking at functional space versus physical space right yes. now yes. in our schools. Right. Um, every single time, well, we went before the CIP committee and they talked mm -hmm. about, uh, you, talk, you talked about the fact that you're going to need eventually an elementary school or that is a possibility. It's a possibility. Right. Um, it's a possibility that you need to, may need to add on to um, the kindergarten. Moose Hill already mm -hmm. we have portables there and you know this town has good and bad <laughs> you know experiences with portables yeah so yeah. Um, yeah. so tell me about this this program that's you, this group that you have together that's looking at space needs right we, what we're doing is 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 we're taking a look at the the whole idea of the use of space in in schools from a program standpoint Instead of from a sheer numbers, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll be a little more, I'll be a little more specific about that. If you come in and say, "What is the capacity of the cafeteria at the high school?" The the, the fire department comes in and determines based on square footage and that sort of thing how many people could safely be evacuated in a reasonable amount of time. So when they talk about capacity, what they're talking about is how many people can fit in the room. Mm -hmm. Well, we realized as we dug in on some of the uh, some of the other problems that we've had with space at, at North School and whatnot, was that the the idea of the capacity of a school is very much reliant upon the programs that you have in there. And if you're going to be very transparent with the public and you're going to uh, you're going to convey the notion of capacity in a meaningful way, you have to have a way to connect the number of people in the building to the programs that it offers. Mm -hmm. And the example that I use a lot with that would be an art room. Uh, if, you know, if you take a look, uh, say this for illustration, North School, uh, if we had a, an influx at one grade level and we had to add a classroom, people will ask, well, do you have the space? Do you have the capacity? Well, in our current configurations with our current programs, all the classrooms are full. Mm -hmm. Like we can't turn them away. So what we one solution might be, we may have to take the art room and turn it into a classroom. Now if you think about the art room during the course of a day, there are students in the art room all day. All day. But those are students from other classrooms. 
So we, when we calculate the capacity of a school, we don't include the art room in that calculation. Well, if we have to move kids into the art room for, for a classroom, what that means is we've just expanded the capacity of the school by 20 students, let's say. However, <laughs> we have done so at the expense right. of the art program. And it's really important when we have those discussions and we make those decisions, we want everyone involved, whether it's staff or parents or community members, to understand, no, we didn't just add a, a, we didn't just add a classroom mm -hmm. on. We made a sacrifice of our programs to make more room in the, in the, in the school building. Right. So, so in that way, like I said, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a model for being able to convey that in a really transparent way so that people understand, yes, you, we did put another 20 kids in the building, but we impacted our program. Right. And, and, and that's, that's really what we're after. We're trying to define that idea of functional capacity. You know, a lot of people know the school that their chil ch children are in. They, right. they have opportunities right. to go visit that school because of events that are happening at that school. Mm -hmm. But they don't know what the other schools are like. And, right. you know, every year the school board does the tour of the schools and they invite yep. the public to it. Right. Um, <clears throat> and not that I would say that, you know, 1,100 people should come and, <laughs> right. and tour the schools with you, but right. what a difference it might make right. if people who had children in the elementary school went to the middle school and took the tour mm -hmm. so they could see how all of the space is being utilized. Right. Right. Or the same with the high school. You know, right. the high school has, it's a, it's, a, it's a big campus, but the rooms are utilized. Yes. And, right. uh, you know, it's, unless you've had the experience of going to those places, you don't really know. Right. It, so, that, I guess when we talk about um, the space that we have in our schools, mm -hmm. As one person in this town, I become very frustrated when, when people tell us, keep saying, oh, yeah, but your numbers are going down. Mm -hmm. Why don't you have all, r enough room mm -hmm. if your numbers start going back up? It, I, I, the other piece that is not often discussed is the fact that since our numbers went down and we did have space available, one of the things that we did to avoid cost to the taxpayers was we took what used to be uh, program offerings that were outside of our district for special education students and we brought them back into the schools. We, we used rooms that at that point were not being used. We staffed them um, and we created programs so that students with disabilities in our district don't have to ride a bus for a half an hour or 45 minutes to go to a special school half, that, that's in another city. Uh, they can go to school where other kids go to school. Right. Now we also, as a part of that, every year, you, you know, when we do the budget, we calculate the cost avoidance of that. And what we do is the special, the, the pupil services director calculates the cost of those programs, and then she calculates what it would cost to educate those same students if we sent them out, out of the district. Well, this past year, the cost savings is $10.1 million. In one year or <coughs> over the life of the? One year. In one year. In one year. Over the life of the programs, uh, the, the total savings is close to $90 million. So when you think about that, our budget was 76, 72? 70, yeah, we're, we ended up at about 74. 74 million yeah. last yeah. year. Theoretically, if, if we had those things out, then it could have been 84 million. Could have been. Could um, have been with, with higher numbers and that sort of thing. The problem that you have is that people don't acknowledge that. And they, what they don't remember is that, you know, could we, if we went back to 5,700 kids, could we put students in? But we're back to that whole issue of functional capacity. Now we're going to take a program that services children close to their homes, and we're going to send those children back out you know, because we no longer can service them here to hollow out those classrooms to, to, to use them as regular education classrooms. You know, so c can we get, could we get back to, 5,700, we could, but we're also going to have to accept the fact that Matthew Thornton School was close to 900 students. The cafeteria was divided into two classrooms, so students ate lunch in their rooms, and some of the class sizes were thir over 32, 30, 30 32 students. Uh, individual or small groups were held in hallways, they were held in, you know, in closets and that sort of thing. So people forget about that 
but if we're going to have a discussion about it, that needs to be part of it. Does the state have a maximum number of students that they allow in each classroom? They have a recommended maximum. Um, the For K to 2, their recommended maximum is 25 students. Now, if you work in in the business, you know, that's a big group of little people. It is. Uh, for grades three, uh, three and up, it's, 20, it's, uh, it's 30. Um, w what we do is we knock five off of both of those for our guidelines. Our primary classrooms, we stay, try to stay under 20. And in grades, in grades three through five, we, try, we will go up to 25. Mm -hmm. We feel like that's a more productive instructional environment. Are there times where we may nose over that? There are, but we try not to do that. And in the middle school, I know the high school is a whole different number because right. it depends on who's taking the, the classes. It could be anything. It yeah. could be four. It could be it 20. It could be four. It could be 40. 30, 40. Yeah. Phys ed class might have 60. Right, yeah. right. Yep. Um, yeah, middle, middle school, we try, to use, we try to use 100 to 110 on a team. That's and, what we try to say. And you have to. four or five, uh, five classes, so that's 25 right. per class right. at about. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, um, I, you know, I've lived through, I've been here for almost 20 years, so I've lived through the years when we had art on a cart and music on a cart mm -hmm. and reading in the hallways and on picnic tables in the right. hallways at Matthew Thornton. Um, and the difference in the quality of the, of the product is so much when mm -hmm. they're in their own classrooms, when the students are coming to them, right. as opposed to them going to them to the students, right. the time in front of the student, you know, that's one of the biggest things that the school board has always said: instructional time is so important. Right. So, right. Um, I right. hope that you're able to make the um, people understand the difference between functional and physical space mm -hmm. as you come forward. So that yeah, we should expect that around uh, September, uh, October? We have uh, our initial reports slated for late October. We want to try to do a very thorough job with that, but we also want to make sure that the board is able to, to have that material in their hands before budget season. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not anticipate a building project this in the current or, or in the upcoming budget cycle. Uh, but we do have a lot of questions and, and there are a lot of discussions that we need to have with the board and there are a number of things that I think we as a community need to need to yeah. think about and talk about as far as where we want to go with our schools. And when we're talking about the upcoming budget cycle, we're talking mm -hmm. about fiscal year 2020. Yes, it sounds strange to say it, but yeah, right. it makes Be me feel old. Because <laughs> we're already in fiscal year 2019. Correct. Our fiscal year ends June 30th. Correct. So at the <coughs> CIP meeting, we talked about 2022 mm -hmm. for 21 and 22, and Mr. Kerr also pointed out that all of the debt from the school or the debt from the high school? I, if memory serves me correctly, it is our, it, the high school is the last major piece to And that's off. completed in 2022. Right, right around there. Yeah. 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 So, so, I mean, not that you, um, yeah. you want to go spend money just because you, no. you are out of debt. Right. You don't want to go back into debt just because you're out of debt. But right. if there is a need, um, the the consequences of that are not going to be huge on a taxpayer because well, they're taking yeah. off one thing and adding. You know, we we, we don't like to spend it's taxpayer money no unless what. we absolutely have to. Right. But it is also important to know, and if Peter were here, he would tell us this as well because he tells me this every chance that he gets. Uh, if you don't have something as far as building projects go or renovations or upgrades go, it actually hurts your bond rating. Right. The same so, way that it hurts your credit rating if you don't have a credit card. Correct. You know, so I if mean, you don't have anything out there, the right. assumption that the, that the banks are going to make is that you, in the, the credit you rating, can't do it. you're not keeping up your facilities. Right. So it, it actually can hurt your bond rating right. if, you have, if you're without right. debt completely. Well, you know, like I said, I've been here almost 20 years, and I've never been disappointed with the. I've been disappointed with the, the voters, not, <laughs> not, 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 but uh, but on the you know for the majority of the projects, right, the right. things that they felt we really needed, they've always come through, right, and that's right. always been you know great. Well, it's one of the exciting things about working as community. It has a very strong reputation right. for supporting good ideas. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why 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 my team and I really feel like. 
uh, we need to do the best job possible to put together useful information for people so that they can be thoughtful when they make their decisions as mm -hmm. far as what they're going to vote for. So it, I feel fortunate. I feel fortunate to work here because, you know, there, there are other towns around us that might not necessarily function that way. It, right. You know, the answer might flat out be no. Well, I'm looking forward to next week, the beginning of school for the teachers. and Can't um, wait to get everybody back. Getting our learners back. I have, you know, keep saying this, I don't know if it'll be true, but t in two more years I'm thinking I'm retiring. <laughs> and for the past two years I've done 180 days of tweets every single day I've been in school. Oh, there you go. You know, so we'll see if I'm able to make that for two more years. <laughs> but um, anyway, I, I do appreciate you coming and talking with me uh, today. Thank you for having uh, me. We, we kind of took the summer off and we're back in business and I'm hoping that this will be a monthly show so that we can keep the voters okay. and, and parents and even the kiddos. I hope kids are watching, although I do get, oh, I saw you on TV yesterday, Mrs. Soros, <laughs> uh, every once in a while. So, um, you know, informed. And if you yeah. have questions that you want me to ask our superintendent, please let me know. This is Mary Wing Soares, and this has been Transparency in Government.